Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Appreciate you all stopping by to hear some of these stories. It was really cool today. I had a couple listeners come by the shop down in Snow Hill, the uh, soap shop. Can't for the life of me remember their YouTube handles. I tried, and it just went right out of there. But anyway, feel free to call yourselves out if you want. I'm not going to use your street names on here. I appreciate y'all swinging by and let me run my mouth for a little while. You never know I was practically a hermit the first 35 years of my life, would you? And we have Nickel here tonight doing what Nickel does. He uh, he doesn't like the camera, so we're going to let him do his turn his back thing. Also trying out a new app for the cat cam, so it's a little more clear, I think. A little more crisp. The colors seem a little better. So we'll try this out. Uh, they can, you can do it over Wi-Fi, but right now we're connected with a USB, long USB cable. So, eh, we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, let's read some stories. Yes, I lied to you because I can't be bothered to check. This happened many years back when a friend of mine had a problem with his computer. He needs it to be fixed ASAP and the computer repair shop he goes to isn't open. So he came to me for help. I tried to run him down the troubleshooting steps to see what the problem was. The troubleshooting didn't produce any results, so I concluded that the PSU, power supply unit, is probably fried. I met up with him to shop for a PSU and went back to his house. Just to be sure, I ran the same troubleshooting steps in case he did it wrongly. First thing I did was to swap the power cable from the monitor to the PC. To my surprise, it actually turned on. I looked at my friend and asked him if he actually did any of the troubleshooting I told him to do. He looked at me sheepishly and said he actually didn't bother. So my friend now has a shiny new PSU that he can't return due to store policy. I told him with a smile to be more careful next time so he won't waste other people's time and his money. Okay, that is just pure laziness on your friend's part. <laughs> I mean, it takes two seconds to swap the cable out long enough to see if you got a bad cable. Well, at least he's got a spare PSU, I guess. But honestly, if it was me, he'd also have a strained friendship at this point. Don't BS me, man. If you don't want to do something, tell me you don't want to do it. I can almost respect somebody telling me they're just being lazy and don't want to do it, rather than just telling me, yeah, 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 I, I did it, I did it. Almost had to go on site on a Friday afternoon. Hi, Tales from Tech Support. Long time reader, first time poster. I've worked for a small MSP with about 80 clients for a year and have many stories I can share here. Well, please do. We'd love that. I work 50-50 on site at clients' offices or remote from home. I have an office but rarely go in, as neither does anyone else from my team. Last Friday, 4.15 in the afternoon and I'm sitting at my desk at home thinking I might get lucky and not have anything come up in the next 45 minutes and get off early. As I'm easing into a game, I get an email with an attached voicemail from my boss. Hey Kazmaier, can you go out to client's office and see why their internet is out? It's not a Comcast outage, maybe they unplugged something again. The voicemail, hi guys at MSP, this is client. Our internet has been down for an hour, and we have a project that needs to go out ASAP. We'll be here till 8 at least, but we need internet backup. Can someone come take a look? My dreams of getting off early shattered. I jump on our remote management system to double check, and sure enough, their server and all workstations are offline. Client's office is on the far side of the next town over, and it's close to 5, which means the freeway is going to be a parking lot. So I take a moment to make a sandwich and fill my water bottle. I take one last look at their remote system, and they're online. I called the client to see what happened. Me. Hey, I see you guys are back up. What happened? Did the intern unplug the switch again? This happened a couple weeks ago. Client. No, it was uh quite a bit simpler than that. Me. Oh? Client. Due to a clerical error, we apparently haven't paid our internet bill in four months. We just got that settled and they turned back on our service. I fired off an email to my boss explaining what happened, swapped my water for a beer, and sat back at my desk to enjoy my sandwich and an evening of games. Good for you, man. Glad that worked out. It's bad enough working into the evening doing some overtime, especially when you got to travel out for calls. But on a Friday night, yeah, that just kind of sucks. Uncle Reddit really wants a beer right now, but with my current stomach issues, I think we're going to have to hold off on that for at least a few weeks. If I have to have surgery, probably a couple months. The day someone refused to refresh their browser. That day, my friends, was today. I'm part of tech support at a company that integrates with patient data software in my industry to cut back clients' time on certain aspects of their job. If the client updates data on their patient in one and wants it to sync immediately, they need to refresh their browser. Simple, right? Not today, apparently. 
and took a call from a client who said the sink was off. Not in those words as she doesn't know what sync means, but that's beside the point. User. It's not pulling data for XXX and I know I entered it. It's not working. Me. When did you change the data? Client. Yesterday. So I remote in to take a look and the information she entered yesterday was clearly entered seconds before she called. I let her know that it looked like the data had just been updated and she started yelling that it didn't matter and our product didn't work. Me. If you refresh your browser right after you update the data, it will sync and you'll be able to see it. Client, literally screaming, I should never have to refresh my browser. Me, you just click this button right here. Client, still screaming, I refuse to refresh my browser. You should have built a product that works. <laughs> Me, refreshing your browser will update the data immediately. Client, that's too much work. I shouldn't have to take that extra step. I'm canceling your garbage product now and I want a refund. Well, okay then. I've never had someone so upset about that, but if she's refusing to do it, there probably wasn't much hope for her learning the product anyway. Was the screaming necessary though? Well, the screaming's not necessary, but I'm pretty sure it's genetically built into some people. They just can't help it. And then you have older people who can't hear, which is me, although I haven't started the really talking loud thing yet, but my wife, <laughs> she, yeah, I love my wife, love you honey. There's a lot of times she'll be talking and telling a story or something and she's talking like you're, you know, three rooms over. <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to mop up the blood coming out of my ear canal. Oh. Can you stop the hurricane? Howdy, folks. Backwoods Tech back again. I just wanted to say that no matter what industry that I've done IT in, education, state government, federal government, or finance, that some people seem to treat their jobs as more important than their very lives. I'm sure you know the types. They're the ones that would live in the office if it wasn't for the fact that it was banned. They have an unhealthy dedication to their job, even in the face of extreme danger or to health or life. On this afternoon, a couple of years ago, I get a call on the emergency tech line. It's only activated during times of extreme emergency, such as natural disasters, and is open and dedicated to us helping the financial advisors and their staff try to prevent damage ahead of time, or to help recover from damage after. In this case, the line was activated a few days before a major hurricane was ready to go up the East Coast. I had been dedicated for those days in helping offices in the potential affected path slash cone with verifying their business continuity plans, how to properly store equipment to help reduce the chances of it being damaged, etc. Normally, the financial advisors are pretty good about being prepared ahead of time. Normally. Let us move a few days down the line. I get a call from an office early in the day. They're within eyesight of the shore. The user I'm talking to is cursing their coworkers for being cowards <laughs> and saying if it wasn't for the forced evacuation orders by the state's governor, they would have already fired everyone for dereliction of duty. This is not my first rodeo with people in the finance industry who have no sense of propriety or safety of others, much less themselves. Just prior to that year, I had dealt with an office that was mad they couldn't conduct business after a wildfire had burned down all the cell towers in their area. Anyway, back to this mad lad who had finally calmed down enough to get to the point of the call. User. I thought the NWS, National Weather Service, was pranking us about the hurricane. I then wake up this morning to forced evacuations because it's supposed to hit at high tide and have us under 15 to 20 feet of water here at the office. I came in to try to save my equipment. Me. Why are you still there? The hurricane's about 4 or 5 hours offshore. You can still get to safe ground. User. I had to come in and grab my computers and I'm calling to review my recovery plan. Me. Call back after the hurricane's passed and you can get phone and internet service back. Get yourself safe. User. Can you stop the hurricane? Me. I wish I could. It'd save a lot of damage in your area. User. I'm serious. Can't you contact the government and tell them to steer it away from the coast with harp? Me. Just get yourself safe before it's too late to get out. As a follow-up, I later talked to this user. They were very much chagrined and hyper-apologetic for their idiocy. They did lose their business's physical location in the storm surge. Thankfully, in the past, they were apparently much more forward-thinking and had a wonderful insurance policy set up for just such an occasion and got a much better building slash office out of it. Okay, first thing, Backwoods Tech, if you ever look at my channel, which I doubt, but hey, a guy can dream, right? If you ever want to write anything for this channel, I will gladly read it. I don't even care if it's your grocery list. I love reading the way you write. Just wanted to share that. As for the hurricane, yeah, I used to be one of those guys with an unhealthy obsession with work. When I was a construction superintendent, uh, <laughs> I put in a lot of, not unnecessary hours, but hours that I could have delegated to somebody else. I mean, quite honestly, there are things that I could have sent someone else to do 
earlier in the day, but you know, you try to get ahead of the curve, get ahead of the schedule a little, come in under schedule, come in under budget, things like that. And you try to do what you can to make you, your boss and your company look better somehow. Auntie Reddit was very unhappy about that. It does happen to us sometimes. What do you mean I can't turn DDR2 into 3? Long story short, I worked in a PC repair shop which mainly dealt with the general public rather than B2B, which certainly had its entertaining moments to say the least. This one frequent customer comes in one time to see if we had any DDR3, which we didn't at the time. A few days later he comes back in with his PC asking if we can take a look as he reckons he may have fried his board and to quote him for a replacement. He then goes on to tell us that he couldn't get a hold of any DDR3 sticks locally, so rather than ordering online, he took it upon himself to saw a notch into a DDR2 stick he had, believing it would work. Saw a notch into a DDR2 stick. This shall forever live rent-free in my memories as one of the funniest encounters I've had in this trade. He actually used a saw to cut a notch to make it fit. That's not how any of this works. I'm going to keep relating to construction because that's what I've done most of my life. On job sites, a lot of times if we were near a fire hydrant, we would pick one that was centrally located where our job site was, and we would get permits from the city to be able to hook up to the hydrant. We very rarely ever needed a actual fire hose, like almost never. You can get adapters, and usually what happens is there's some sort of regulator that screws on first, and then it steps down to garden hose size. It's basically industrial garden hose, like you would see it like a garden center. One of the thicker, really beefy ones for the concrete guys to fill drums for making, you know, mixing mortar for brickwork and things like that. Yeah, so just because we step that down does not mean that now that garden hose is good for putting out fires. Like, it doesn't work that way. Just because you made it fit doesn't mean it's always going to work. Um, that may not have been the best analogy, but you, you understand what I'm saying. Well, thanks for stopping by to listen to some of these stories today, guys. Hope you enjoyed them. If you did, do me a favor. If you feel like it, click that like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel. And click that little bell icon so you don't miss the next time the fat guy with the beard tells you stories. See ya.